I am back. Even with university on the side, I still upload. And today's video is very important. How to code your own multi-sheet for Left 4 Dead 2. I asked you guys if there was an interest and you made it very clear that this is what you wanted. The multi-sheet contains an aimbot, ESP, how to be up and how to shove. This will make you an Avengers level threat in the game. This tutorial will start from scratch and at the end you will have your very own sheet to add more features to. But for that to happen, you will have to follow every step that I take and do not skip anything, even if it might feel unimportant. If you want to download the source code instantly without putting in any grime work, then head down to my buy me a coffee page. It's only $5 and you will support me, a poor student. This series is also divided into multiple videos, so if you have a problem, it makes it easier for me to help in the correct segment. And as always, leave a comment, I'll answer it. Leave a like and subscribe, you will get notified when the next part drop. Also join the Discord, why not? But enjoy this showcase now. See you guys. Side Steam and I show this in this video later as well, but add cache insecure if you're going to use it. Here we can spawn some zombies and let's start our application. So if you want to change the hotkey, just change these class variables, common aimbot key and special aimbot key. So the common means the common infected. And the special means the special infected. The smokers, hunters, so on. Come on, regular zombies. So if we start this, I will not change the hotkeys. We can see a console application appear and then disappear. Then we will have this beautiful Imgui window that allows us to choose either aimbot, bhop, ESP. An auto shove. So if we click in aimbot, we also get a second option to choose closest to crosshair. This means uh, the aimbot will pick the zombie or special infected closest to the crosshair. But let's check the first option. We will use aim or B up. We will click in ESP and then auto shove. You will also get a second option which says only infect or special infected. This means the auto shove will not uh, auto shove regular common zombies if you check this checkbox. So let's keep it unchecked for now and let's take a look at our ESP. So this is the ESP with the default colors and configuration. Now, if we go to the next tab, which is called colors you will see some options here. So you can choose the color for the survivor like this. You can uncheck the box to remove the box. You can uncheck the line to remove the line. You can remove the dot that is displayed at the origin. So I will use these settings. And for the special infected, we have some or the same things. So the default color is pink here. You can choose. Let's take a look at some infected. I'll pick, pick a gun. And here you can see all of the dots. So they die. So let's test. It will shoot the closest zombie to our character and that's the magnitude so if we want to choose or shoot at the zombie that's closest to the crosshair we select closest to crosshair and it goes like a wave through the zombies amazing 
you can see the color and because we have auto shop um and it doesn't matter if you have only a special infected in this case but because we have auto shove on we can spawn in a special infected the aimbot also works and we use the different key we have different hotkeys for special and common infected because that makes it easier to uh, handle in game if you want to target special infected or if you want to target common and so on but hunters become quite useless when you have auto shove on and we have the b op of course so that's the showcase i hope that this will be to your liking all right time to get started so we need some software for us to be able to create this multi sheet and the the type of software you need is visual studio as you know here i have my project visual studio just if you don't know which version just use the one that i'm using 2022 and you can get it from microsoft's website so install Visual Studio 2022 with C Sharp development and the second tool which we will be using is Sheet Onion. So Sheet Onion you can find over at this page. You should already have it by this point if you're trying to make a multi sheet, but download Sheet Onion if you haven't. And the final tool or the final two tools is either Ghidra, this one's free, or Ida. You can use Ida Freeware as well. Install Ida Freeware, it will work for this tutorial, or install Ghidra. I will personally show Ghidra and if you're having problems installing Ghidra, just watch this tutorial by Neil Fox. He explains it, how to install it on Windows. And when you have all of these three types of software, we can begin this tutorial. But we also need to prepare the game. And you do that by going into Steam, go into your library where you have FOD2, you right click on the game, you head down to properties. Under this properties tab, you will add into the launch options. Very important, incredibly important for this tutorial. Dash insecure. This will remove VAC and you will not be able to play with people who are using VAC. So it will allow us to use third party software, cheating and so on, without getting banned and we can't uh, play with normal players. So that means we can have an environment for ourselves to create this multi sheet. Very important, incredibly important. Don't blame me if you get banned. The second option is dash console. So this dash, dash console is because normally the console doesn't appear in Left 4 Dead 2. So I will start the game with dash console and I'll show you guys the next next step that you will do. Because we will need to utilize the console for this tutorial. You can see that it says you have dash insecure in the launch options which will prevent you from connecting to VAC secure servers. So if you get this message, message, it means you're good to go. And in this console, you will write the following. Find citation, your key that you want to bind to the console. Then more citation marks. 
So I'll go console and end citation. You will bind. I use F6, I think. So I will just change this to F6. Click submit. This will bind the console. And when you go in the menu, you should be able now to click F6. Mine doesn't work. Because, yeah, so just click on some buttons if it doesn't work directly. But you need to have be able to open a console. Yeah, I think that should be it. You should only need to bind the console to it because we will need the console to open maps. So there we go. We have prepared the game, we have prepared the software. Now we will create a new project. So, a new project and it will be the form of a console app we will call it something like uh, for the to multi go next i will use the .NET 6 framework i hope that you do the same because then it will be much easier to follow the tutorial now you should have the same code here as me. And what we do here is, let's just remove it for the time being, and we will install some NuGet packages. So we will install all of the needed NuGet packages for this tutorial to work. So you will go into browse, and in the browsing section, you will search for imgui you click on install then you search for six labor dot image sharp you will install that one the next item or the next package will be veldrid.imgui All of these packages will help us to create an overlay, create a visual GUI with imgui and all of these other packages to calculate vectors and a lot of different stuff. You can see here that they depend on each other. So, the next one will be vortis.mathematics. As you can see, I couldn't use the 1.7 and I will need to use the 1.62 because it's .NET 6. So, just a little hiccup, we install it. Now install clickable transparent overlay. I'm not sure if my packages disappeared, but I will install the latest one. It will need these other dependencies. And we should get... And uh, as, of course I will need to use the 6.21 because I'm using .NET 6. That's my bad. Okay. So, let me check if using GUI.net. So I have the packages. It's just not showing for some reason. Once you have installed, there we go. So once you have installed these, we're done with the rendering packages. And the last package we will use is my memory library so before you install it you can go down to properties and go into build and in the platform target you will choose x86 because left for the 2 is 32 bit and after that you can click on install because otherwise it will throw uh, 
an exception. There we go. We have all of the needed programs. And in the next tutorial, we will start coding. Or no, not coding. We will need, we will find the offsets. All right. See you guys in the next part.